Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston and today we're gonna talk about the time sort or the Tim sort. It doesn't have any in it, so I'm not sure if it's supposed to be called a time sort, but the main point is how does it work? So it is a combination of two algorithms. It's a combination of two algorithms. One algorithm is the insertion sort and the other one is the merge. So what basically happens is you have these things called as runs. So runs are basically an arbitrary length that you divide the array into. So let's say the run is five in this case, so you will divide this array into five parts each. If the array was longer and you had a bigger value of run, then you will divide the array into uh, runs of that value. So it's basically you have, you have an array, you split it up into runs, the value of runs. So let's say five, so you split it up into five and then five, in this case, it's ideally two parts, but there might be difference also. But the main point is, on each of these parts, you apply insertion sort. So you apply insertion sort, you apply insertion sort, and then one by one, you basically go out and merge all those parts with each other. And that is what creates the spark of sorting. So we're gonna run through this example. It's an actual code. Um, it's, it's an actual code written in Python, so I'm gonna basically run through the whole thing. So an, our array example is going to be this one over here. So I'm just gonna copy it and go through it one by one, line by line. So array run is five. So basically five uh, ele elements at a time are going to be split out. And I'm just calling the split, the time sort uh, function. So I click on this, I go into the time sort function and let's just put this over here. I'm gonna put it in a very nice manner so that we have a lot of stuff to work with. Okay, oh wait, this doesn't work. Oh, I just messed it up. Run, cool, this works. So if this is an our, our array, what's, what's happening here? For x in range of zero to length of array, comma run. So what does this mean? So in Python, what basically happens is if you want to do a for loop, you have to do it something like this. For x in range of zero to length of array, which means that the value of x goes from zero to the length of the array. What's the length of the array? In this case, the length of the array is 10. So zero will go for, or x will go from zero to nine. It's always one less than the total value. But there's a very important thing that I need to tell you. You also have one more parameter that is run. So what's happening is x is taking the value of zero, but then after the first loop, this gets added instead of an increment. So the run value is added to x instead of it being incremented by one. So what happens is the first x value is zero and the next x value is immediately five because run is being added to the value of x. So what happens inside this for loop? Inside this for loop, what we're doing is we're actually splitting, uh, splitting, I can't, I can't even spell nowadays. It's splitting the array. So what happens here? Check this out. So I'm saying this will be equal to this. So if you, if you pay close attention, array of x to x plus run is equal to insertion sort of the same value, right? Both of these are the same. Now, what happens here? What does this mean? What does x to x and then this colon to x plus run mean? What does it mean? It means that I am basically pulling out values from x to x plus run. What does what are these values? So initially we'll have uh, initially they will be uh, so let me just actually write those values because that will make a lot of sense. So x will be initially zero and then x will be equal to five because there are two two splits right there are two splits so if x is five then x plus run x plus run will be equal to zero plus five that is five and if x is five then uh, x plus run will be equal to uh, uh what's that ten right so basically x and x plus run so array of zero to uh, to five array of zero to five so this basic um, operator gives me the values of the array in an array which are from zero to five. So I get only the five elements that I want because run is equal to five, so I get the five elements. Now I take these five elements and pass them into a function of insertion sort. So basically once this function of insertion sort, so if you check this out, I've actually written a function that takes an array and, and does the insertion sort algorithm. We'll go through this again one more time and basically gives back me, uh, returns the array to that value. So here now, this part, I have the sorted array. 
Okay, I have the sorted array of five elements that I wanted and now I can take this value and then give it back to the array of x and x plus one. So I'm taking the same array, sorting it and putting, back, putting it back in the same place. That is crazy, right? It's crazy. But you can do it literally in Python with one line of code. <laughs> with one line of code. That is insane. Like It is absolutely crazy. But that's what I'm doing. I'm basically splitting. So what happens in this case? So what happens? So basically this part gets sorted. Okay, so if I was to sort this, this would be over here. Eight will come over here. So I'll just write eight will come over here. And then I'll have uh, this value that is 23 will come over here. Then I have 30 and then I have 35. So I'll just delete these two and I'll delete the eight. And now you have five elements, uh, three, eight, 20, 30, 35 sorted. And then in the second, in the second loop, uh, the other ones will also be sorted. So this will also be sorted. So what will happen? Uh, 10 is right in its place. Uh, 40 is also right in its place. 50 is not right and 52 are not right. So I'll just copy this. I'll put it here. And now, yeah, you have this sorted also. Okay, now, now both the parts are sorted. This is just an example. You can have thousands of elements and it will work the same way. You will basically split the array into different uh, sizes. The size is equal to run. And, and that will be how you will and, and, and you will basically apply insertion sort on each of those parts. That is the time sort. Now, now the most important part is the fact that you have to merge them. So these two parts that you created, right? You have to merge them together. You have to merge them. But there's one more important part. So once, so let's say you have a, a list of other elements. Okay, now I just, let's take an example. I just did this and I added some more. And your run is still equal to five. So you have five elements here. You have five elements here and you have five elements here and then you have five elements here. So which ones do you merge is the question, right? So the way you do this is first you merge this and this, then you merge this and this, and then you get two big arrays and then you merge them together. So it's like a recursive merge. Uh, you can take an example of the recursive merge sort. The merge sort, what uh, that is, that is a, which is a standard algorithm, is the best example in this case. So basically, you're taking splits of array and then you're merging them together in a recursive fashion, one by one. It's like a tree, you know. It's like a tree. You start off, started from the bottom. Now you here, you know. It's it's like you start from the bottom and now you go up, slowly, slowly, steadily building the entire array. So how do you do that? Let's check this out. So I have this this uh, this variable called run inc um, pushed over here. So run inc is equal to run. So I take the value of run, which is right now five, and I give it to run inc. Now you will understand why I did this because I don't want to change the value of five, but I, I but now I want to place it in some some container where I'll change its value. Right? I'll change its value. Cool. So while run inc is less than the length of the array, okay. While run inc is less than the length of the array, so. I think you already understand what we're doing here, right? So for x in range of zero, length of array, I'll just add one more space over here just to make it a little bit more understandable. So well, for x in range of zero to the length of array, okay, to the length of array, two times uh, run inc is our incrementer. So as I said initially, this is our incrementer. And if this didn't exist, x will go from zero, one, two, three, four, five until the length of the array. But as this is our incrementer, x is not going to be incremented by one value. It's going to be incremented by two times run inc. So let's take the first example. The first example will be, let's say x is equal to zero. And you go through this, so you say, and run inc. So I'll just say run inc. Run inc is equal, okay, i is smaller. I just want to be accurate, you know. Run inc is your value. So run inc will be equal to five initially. So if run inc is equal to five, what happens? Okay, what happens? So it says x equal to range of zero to length of array two times running. So two times running will be two times of this value. So if I just write this two times run inc is equal to 10, right? Because two times five is 10. So, so the value of this is 10. So the next time it runs is going to be 10. So let me just do it for the zeros. So array of zero plus array of zero and x and two times run of ink. What just happened? What just happened? The same thing that happens here, where you have run and run, is the same thing that's happening here. You have two times run ink and two times run ink. But check this out. What are you merging here? What are you merging here? You're merging the array of the first running and the array of two times the running. 
So what you're merging is, okay, I just eliminate these parts over here. Just doesn't make sense to have this. I'll just take this as an example at the moment. So you have this part over here and you have this part. So you want to merge this with this. So to get the value of this, what you do is you say merge array of x and x plus run ink. So run ink is equal to 5. So 0 and 5. 0 and 5 will give you this. Array of x plus uh, run ink and x plus 2 times run ink. So x plus run ink will give you this value and x plus 2 times run ink will give you the value of 10. So you basically select this one and then you separate them with a comma, that is the comma over here, and then you pass it into this function called merge. So the merge function takes two arrays and then merges them together and returns the final array. And once it returns the final array is what, will you, what you will give back to the whole array. So x is where you started, x plus two times run ink is where you ended, which is from here till here, and then you basically give it back to the whole one. So you see, it's x and x plus two running. So it's the whole, the whole package. It's the whole package. And that's how this basically works. And then when you basically get out of this, okay, when you basically get out of this, you say run equal to run times two ink. Every time you increment, and this is also what's happening over here. So x also changes over and over again. And if you have a bigger array, you'll understand that, okay, first, if you have like run is equal to three, it also makes sense. So this, this three will do first and this three, then this three. So when you merge, you'll merge these six together and then you'll merge these six together and then you'll merge the whole thing together. It's, a, it's like a recursively building an entire tree. Okay, so before I finish it up, I just wanna go through the merge, uh, merge process. So what does merge do? So the merge process is very simple. What you do is, you basically first start off with saying that a equals zero, b equals zero, and, you're, and you just create like a random array in which you will basically push in all the values. So while a is less than the length of array of i, uh, so le length of uh, the first array, and b is less than the length of the second array. So if you, if you observe closely, a and b are pointers, okay? a and b are pointers. a is the pointer for the first array, and b is the pointer for the second array. So while a is less than the length of the array, if a if array of a is less than array of the b array of b, which means that if the first element right is less than the first element of the of, of the second array, what you do is you say you append the first one, you append the first one that is three inside of the array because you want to do an ascended array. You want to do an ascended array where the numbers are growing instead of numbers falling down. Okay, you want to grow. And what you do is you increment a of i. So now a will, instead of pointing to three, will point to eight. Okay, instead of pointing to three, it will point to eight and so on and so forth. So now you check between a and 10, eight and 10. But the same thing happens, right? Eight is still bigger than 10. So you again increment a. Okay, then you get 23 and 10. Now what happens is 23 is less than 10, which means the b gets an increment. So now you increment b and you push the value of b inside the array. And so you do this over and over again until you reach a point where, you know, both of them are either equal. So if both of them are equal, then you basically push both of them into the array and you increment both of them. Now, there will be a point, there will be a point when either A will have crossed the, 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 its threshold and B will have crossed its threshold. But, but if all of the elements are not pushed into the array, there's still discrepancy. There are still elements left inside either A or either B, whichever ends up first, right? So while A is less than the length of array of I, you append all of them. And while B is less than, you append all of them. Now you might be thinking, Quinston, but what if there are elements left in both of them? There can't be elements left in both of them. That just wouldn't happen. It's, it's mathematically impossible because both of these values have to be true. If I, even one is not true, then only one of this will run, which is the whole merge process. And then once you basically merge all of them and then return the array. So you, you repeatedly call merge from this part over here to merge, 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 and you increment, you, you, you open up the run ink over and over again. So that's how this basically works. I'm sure uh, this was a little bit interesting. Uh, this was an interesting algorithm. Okay, if you wanna know about the insertion sort, I already have a video based on that. And But you can also go through this if you want. I didn't wanna cover insertion sort because I, I think it's a different video. I don't think it, it fits in well over here. But the time sort is very interesting search algorithm and it is used by all the major programming language APIs like Java.sort, 
uh, the, the Java sort, the Python sorted alpha function, all these big, um, you know, production level environments use use the merge sort. Oh, sorry, the time sort. And uh, I think this was a very interesting video. So thanks for watching, guys. I um, if you liked it, please share, subscribe, and and do and give me all the love in the comments. Um, please share this with a with the with the person you think needs to understand what a time sort is. And uh, and uh, the code will as always be in the description. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video.